2 Samuel chapter 12. And the Lord sent Nathan. Now Nathan is a remarkable man because when you read the sons of David, David names one of his sons after Nathan. And in chapter 11, verse 27, we've got the anger of the Lord. In chapter 12, verse 1, we've got the mercy of the Lord. God sent in Nathan. He didn't send him an executioner. He didn't send him death. He sent him a prophet. And he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, David and Uriah in Jerusalem. Remember, so close David could see the house from where he walked on the roof. And one rich, that's David, uh, yeah, David, and the other poor, Uriah. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, his wives. And he did. He had a lot of wives. Now watch the description of Bathsheba. But the poor man, Uriah, had nothing save one little ewe lamb, female lamb, which he had brought and nourished up. He took care of his wife. Fed her. Gave her her knee. And it grew up together with him, husband and wife, and with his children. Is it possible that Bathsheba had other children by Uriah? Or did Uriah have children? But it can't be by another wife because it said the poor man had one little ewe lamb. It's an interesting little statement there by the Holy Spirit. And it did eat of his own meat, stayed home, whatever he brought home, and drank of his own cup, and laid in his bosom, the marriage bed, and was unto him as a daughter, not only a wife, but a daughter. Uriah is a good husband, according to the scriptures. What Nathan said by God. And there came a traveler, that's the first time that shows up, the only other time it shows up in Job 31, 32. And Job said, you know, has there been ever a traveler that came to my house that had not opened up the doors? And this traveler for David is the lust of the flesh. And it's funny because Job 32, I'm 31, 32 says, have I opened my door? And God told Cain, sin lieth at the door. And now you have David here. Scripture with scripture. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, David, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd. Of his desire, he could have turned to any one of his wives. He could have looked at Bathsheba, had that desire, and called one of his wives and said, Hey, you know, come. To dress for the wayfaring. Uh, wait a minute. He spared to take of his own flock, of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man. That's his lust. And was coming unto him. But took the poor man's lamb, Bathsheba, and dressed it for the man, dressed it. In order to do what Bathsheba and David did, you would have to undress. Dress it for the man. That means fix it up. Uh, when the God and the angels came to Abraham, Abraham took the calf and dressed it. Huh? Prepare. Prepare. Get it ready. For the man that was come to him. Again, lust of the flesh and eyes. Nathan finishes. David was angered with greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, there's an oath, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. Yep, the capital punishment offense for adultery and a murder in, in the law. Now remember last night, yesterday's chapter, that Joab told this, this messenger, if David starts quoting scripture, <laughs> to tell him Uriah is dead. Nathan steps up to David and gives him this little story. David has no idea what's going on. David says at the end of the story, man, that guy's dead. And then he quotes scripture. 
And the scripture he quotes from, we won't go there, but Exodus 22.1. He shall restore the lamb fourfold. That other fourfold only shows up in Luke 19.8. That's the first time that shows up there. And the only other place is Luke 19.8. Because he did this thing. And because he had no pity. And let's go to, let's go to Exodus 22.1. Let's look at what David quotes. David knows the scriptures. I would assume David wrote them like the law told me he was supposed to. I will assume that Saul did not. I would assume maybe Solomon, but I'm not sure. But Exodus 22.1. If a man steal an ox, that's not the case here, or a sheep, there it is, and kill it, or sell it, he shall restore five oxen, for an ox, oh, that's not ours, and four sheep for his sheep. David knew exactly what that verse said. It wasn't auction. He didn't say, well, I mean, for auction again. So it, he didn't say five. He said fourfold. Why? Because you steal a sheep, fourfold. And let me see what Luke said real quick. That other reference. Luke 19. Okay. Let's see if Sometimes you just want it. Luke 19, 8. That fourfold. It's only two places in the Bible. Fourfold. And 19, 8. Not pages. One more page. Separate page. 19, 8. And Zacharias stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusations, oh, I restore him fourfold. Whoa. Is that a cross reference? <laughs> Two thieves. That's interesting. So Nathan speaks to David in a parable kind of form. No name given. That's a parable. Lazarus and the rich man in hell, there's a name given. That's not a parable. And David says, Nathan, man, he's angry. Judgment. Better hold your tongue. Now remember, David's the king. David has power. I think David had power over Bathsheba, but I can be wrong. And Nathan said to David, now you do not do, you cannot walk up to Pennsylvania Avenue and stick your face in President Trump's face and, and it's not respectful. And Nathan said to David, any king throughout history, when I, there are kings that killed their wives. There were kings that killed that just to kill. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Now that took, that took, a lot of nerve. huh? A lot of nerve. A lot of nerve. Because wait till you see what David's going to do to a bunch of men when we finish this chapter. And you got to wonder, did, and I'm spoken by the Holy Spirit not knowing what I'm going to say when I preach. And i got to wonder, did Nathan know that he was going to say that? Is he quaking in his boots right now? Thus saith the Lord. Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord. you got to get that in there real quick. Because that's what God said, not me. But then again, men had, men were men back then. Thus say, thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. I anointed thee king over Israel. So see, look who sets up kings. God. Look who sets up president. God. Now watch what he says about David. I deliver thee out of the hand of Saul. Not your weapons, not your men. I deliver thee. Remember those times you met Saul and he never met you? That was me, David. And what we're going to look at, David, is why did Saul get the hell and David gets the mercy? Because it's all David's heart. When we're going to read about this, and I don't know if we're going to maybe go right over to the psalm where he repents. David's heart's broken. He is angry at the men that committed this crime then when he realizes it's him. 
I gave thee thy master's house, thy master's wives unto thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. Notice how it seems separated there. And if that had been too little, didn't have enough, David, I would moreover have given you unto thee much and such thing. That's the same blank check that God gave Solomon. You know, write a blank check. That's what God just told David. You want anything? You just ask me. And if it's right and blessing, I give it to you. You did not have to go to Bathsheba. You had other wives. What's wrong with those wives? Abigail, was a, from what we read about Abigail, she's a princess. And we don't know anything about the other wives. Why not? Wherefore, thou hast despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight, adultery and murder. Thou hast killed. Did he kill? Did David kill Uriah the Hittite? He gave the order. So war is bad. Yes, it is. Romans 13, you obey the powers that be. And the ones that gave the orders, God will judge them. You just carry out the orders. And again, we've run into the second, third time now with Joab, with Ahab, with David. You do not necessarily have to do the crime physically. You can do it spiritually and stupid. And a lot of people, a lot of Christians are going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and they're going to say, I didn't do that. You thought it. You discussed it with, uh, on in your head, on your bed, or in your chair, or sitting at the workplace. Jesus said, Whosoever looking upon a woman and lust after in his lust after in his heart has committed. We gotta realize just because we don't do the sin, it's still sin. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and has taken his wife to be thy wife. That's physical. And has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. You blame the children of Ammon. It was you. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from thy house. You're going to reap what you sow, brother. And a whole lot more. When we get done with David's life, that fourfold is going to be four of his sons. And we're going to pick up the first one in the next chapter, Lord willing. It will begin chapter 13, the first lamb. I mean, yeah, the first lamb of four. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart out of thy house. And from now on, David's house is going to be messed up. He's going to be on the run from his son. Because thou hast despised me that, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to, to thy wife. He wasn't against Uriah. It wasn't against Bathsheba. It was against God. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house. Oh, man, yes. I will take thy wives before thy eyes and give them unto thy neighbor. And that's interesting because that's going to come up in chapter 15. That neighbor is his son. It's Absalom. David's going to go on the run from Absalom. And he's going to leave some of his wives behind. Chapter 15, verse 16. And we're going to go only here for one reason. Chapter 15, verse 16, if I can find it real quick. So, 15, 16. And we're not going to look, we'll look at the story, Lord, when we get to it. And the king went forth, David, and all his household after him. And the king left ten women, which were concubines, to keep the house. Now come back over here, where we were. And we'll wait. I will raise evil out of thy own house, and it will take thy wives before thy eyes. 
and shalt lay with thy wives. These ten wives are going to, these ten concubines that David leaves behind, Absalom is going to mate with them according to chapter 12, verse 11. And David calls them concubines, but the Bible calls them wives. You know, it's just like, you know, shacking up, making out. It's a wife, no matter what you call her. And we'll see this in chapter 15, 2 Samuel. Before thy eyes and give them unto thy neighbor. That's, that's Absalom, his son. And he shall lie with thy wives, the concubines, in the sight of the son. And he takes them right on a tower. On, he takes them on the roof kind of thing. Where this all began. We'll get to that, Lord willing. Not we get if the Lord raptures and all, we'll, we'll let God tell us and David tell the story. For thou didst it secretly. There's no secret sin. But I, God, will do this thing before all Israel and before the Son. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna expose you, David. That's, what, that's what's going to happen in the judgment seat of Christ. Now here's David. Here's God and David. God's going to lay us out in the judgment seat of Christ and he's going to expose it all. Every idle word we're going to give an account for. Every thought. Never mind our action. Never mind, okay, I got angry and I flipped somebody off. If I wanted to flip them off. <laughs> well, I can't do that. I'm a Christian. You're still guilty. I wouldn't say those kind of those word those cussing words. That's, but did you think it is going to be judged? Better put them under the blood. First John one nine. When you put them under the blood, the Bible says God is faithful and just to forgive and forget. That's the only way God's going to freaking forget. As soon as you do it, oh man, I can kill. Oh Lord God, forgive me. You know all the things you should have killed me for. I'm sorry, Lord. Please put it under the blood. I'm not fighting that one lately. And David said unto Nathan. Now, what could have been the two reactions of David to Nathan? You're dead. <laughs> How dare you? Or, I have sinned against the Lord. And that's his heart condition. That is his heart condition. Now, shall we pick up Psalm 51? Psalm 51. Now, let's look at David in his heart. In the title of this, because there are some, some Psalms have titles or descriptions. To the chief musician. Put this to music. <laughs> a psalm. The, the, the psalms is your psalm book of the Bible. You don't need that otherworldly junk that's in hymnals today. That don't even mention Jesus. A psalm of David when Nathan the prophet came unto him. After he had gone into Bathsheba. Now here's David. Have mercy upon me, O God. I'm dead. I'm in trouble. According to thy loving kindness. For God so loved the world. No matter what sins we've done, they can be washed. According unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. You find that in Jonah chapter 3. Where Jonah... Cry babies to God, God, you're so merciful, you're so great, you're so wonderful, you're so loving. That's why I did not preach to him, because I know you would forgive him. <laughs> I always laugh at Jonah. It's the same thing that David said. Tender mercy, blot out my transgressions, murder, and adultery. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Isaiah 53 hasn't even been written yet. And cleanse me from my sin. 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 What is that? 
Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. God, you lump all those sins into one sin. They're both sin. It's not a mistake. It's not someone else. It's not Bathsheba was half naked or whatever she was. Lord, he said back in Samuel, I've sinned against the Lord. Watch this. Man, you can get somebody to do verse 3 today. For I acknowledge my transgression. And my sin is ever before me. Now what is that? Every time he looks at Bathsheba. There's the sin. I love her. I mean, he has another child with her, but every time I look at her, I, I got to think about that. Now, maybe God will wash him. God will cleanse him, but it reminds him. Against thee, God. Thee, God. Only have I sinned. This is where David's heart and this is where God says, okay, I forgive you, David. You know what Saul did? Saul went out and sinned. Oh, forgive me. I'm sorry. Everyone's looking at me. Oh, okay. Everybody gone? Samuel gone? All right, get back into trouble again. Oh, oh everybody saw me. Oh, my. Oh, gee. Oh, oh, forgive me. Oh, forgive me. Oh, forgive me. Oh, forgive me. Oh, everybody gone? He goes back into sin again. David is not moving until God says, okay, I'm, I'll take care of you, David. I'll take care of you. And done this evil in thy sight. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. And thou God mightest be justified. When thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. Now who am I Lord? Behold I am shaping iniquity. Lord I'm a sinner. I'm born into sin. And in sin did my mother conceive me. That's who I am. I'm a sinner and I sin. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom inside. Oh, purge me with hyssop. That was what was used on the Passover night when they came out of Egypt. God says, slay those lambs, take the hyssop and strike it on the door. You know what, God, you know what David just said there? I need lamb's blood. Verse 7. That's almost like Abraham telling Isaac, God shall provide himself a lamb. How's that? And we already seen the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Verse 2. The only reference to hyssop and blood in the Bible is that lamb of the Passover night. David knows his scriptures. He has a heart to God and he sins still. And I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. That's Isaiah 118. Come now, let us reason again. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be whiter than snow. And I wonder if Isaiah quoted from David. David says, the only way I can be clean is not going to confession booth. The only way I can be clean is not getting the water. The only way I can be clean is not to join a church. The only way I can be clean is if I have the blood of the Lamb. And David will die and go off in Abraham's place, bosom. And many, many years after that, then the Lamb will sacrifice himself. That Lamb will die. That Lamb will go into the paradise. He'll pick up the Old Testament saints and the dying thief and say, come on, let's go. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. And that's to him, whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, because he's not happy right now, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. I am, my body's broken, Lord. I, what's the expression? I am out of joint. He is in pain right now, probably kneeling before Nathan. I don't mean kneeling before Nathan, kneeling before God, before his prophet. He's probably trembling. He's probably got tears. And now it hurts. Hide thy, hide thy face from my sins. Don't look at me, Lord, but don't look at my sins. 
and blot out all my iniquities. Create. That's the first time that word shows up. In me a clean heart. It's filthy. It's vile, Jeremiah said. And renew a right spirit within me. He's got, he don't have a good spirit right now. It's broken. Cast me not away from thy presence. Lord, please. Do not send me to hell. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. David's pleading for salvation. David does not want to go to hell. So, when we got the sign, we quote, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Hell. You got to be saved from something. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Well, David, your life is going to be ruined. But, uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors the way. And sinners shall be converted. First time that word shows up unto thee. So David says, listen, I've learned a lesson. And Lord God, if you will restore me. And he did not lose his salvation. And I'm going to have troubles. Yes, you tell me my family and everything is going to go against me. But I'm going to teach people. And boy, does he teach Solomon. Have you ever read the book of Proverbs? It was written by Solomon, the son of David. And there's one place in, in the book of Proverbs that Solomon says that my father taught me, my mother brought me up. Solomon just didn't learn about the wife issue. I'm not saying wives are bad. I mean, he had so many of them. And they were wicked and they're vile. And they had other gods. That's what I'm talking about with Solomon. These wives that were other gods, he turned to the other gods. The Bible says, find a Christian woman and marry her. Deliver me from the blood guiltiness. That's the only place that word shows up. And that would be Uriah. I have to think about his name. Everything. Uriah. I'm guilty of blood, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thou God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. There's no singing where we were reading. Lord, if you will forgive me, you will wash away my iniquity. I am going to be rejoicing. I will help others. O Lord, open thou my lips and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There it is. Romans 10 in Psalms. For thou desirest not sacrifice. There was no sacrifice for adultery, and there was no sacrifice for murder. You can't find it. Else I would give it. If there was a lamb, there was an ox, I get it. I'm the king. Thou delightest. That's the only time that word shows up. Look at all these all, first time and only times that these words show up in David's mouth. Thou does not desirest not in burnt offering. I can bring all the offerings one if my heart's not right, God. And you'll see that through Jeremiah. You'll see that through Malachi and all the books. They're bringing their offerings, but God says you're not got the right heart. The sacrifice of God. All right, here's what David. Here's David. Here he is. It's not an oxen. The sacrifices of God. He's getting right with God now. Are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart. That means the bruise. Rub away. Wear. Break. See the heart? With the, with the heart, man believes under righteousness. David is there in front of Nathan. If he's not on the ground on his knees, he is on the ground, laying on the ground. He is bawling. He is broken. He is sore. He is sorry. And God looks at that and says, I forgive you. Oh, God. You may not fool around with OMG. This is a man that is broken, crying. Oh, God. 
Without you, I am going to hell. Oh God, thou will not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. He, he thinks so. God's going to destroy it all. Thou, then thou shalt be pleased with the sacrifices of the righteous, with burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thy altar. So David's broken. Verse 13, David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And, and Psalm 51, right where you see that period after the Lord, that's Psalm 51. After Psalm 51, and Nathan said unto David, the Lord also has put away, put away thy sin. Sin, sin, singular. We saw that in Psalm 51. Thou shalt not die. What was the response to the, to the prayer, to the words of David, Psalm 51? I put it away, David. You're not going to die. How be it? <laughs> you got to pay for your sins. You can be washed of your sins. You can be cleansed of your sins. I, I, I taught many people in the ministry when it comes, hey, listen, if you get saved, you're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, but you still got to pay the penalty. You may get diseases from your sins. You may get, you know, children you don't know you had from your sins. You may get consequences from your sins. I, I, one illustration I used to always give is, that, listen, if before you got saved, you chopped off your arm. Stupidly. Look up on Chop it off. All right, now you're saved. God forgives you. Your arm's not going to grow back. Salvation will change your destination from hell to heaven, it may not make your life better. In most cases, it'll probably make it worse. Because the more you're going to live for the Lord, the more, the Bible says, they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Salvation is not going to settle the goodness, the wonderfulness, and the wellness, and the happiness of living this life right now. Now you will get love, joy, peace, long-suffering. You will get the fruit of the Spirit. But you'll have those fruits in the times of trouble. You'll have peace in times of trouble. But the trouble is not going to go away. How be it? Because by this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blasphemy. Something about what happened in secret. It's going to be made known because there's going to be a baby in the kingdom. Uriah never went back to his wife's house. Uriah has been on the battlefield. David has taken Bathsheba to be his wife. Where did that baby come from? Let's see, wait a minute. David and Bathsheba got married on this day. Uh, that baby was not born nine months. So, getting rid of Uriah did not solve the problem. Everybody's going to know now. Uh-huh, David. Where did that baby come from? And there's a movie out there. When I was lost, I'd seen it. David and Bathsheba. I mean, they covered the body parts, but they have in the bedroom scene where they both come together. Hollywood made a mockery of it. And God said, a great occasion for the enemies, Hollywood, of the Lord to bless me. Well, look at that. That's supposed to be God's greatest man. That's supposed to be the greatest king besides Solomon and all the kids. And look what he did with a woman. But all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody has their sin that they've done. And you, oh, oh, look, adultery. Oh, look, 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 at, look at murder. Yeah? What about your sin of pride? What about your sin of lying? What about your sin of being unfaithful? What about your sin of not being, you know, workative? What, all of sin. There's no degrees of sin in the Bible. 
You know, just as much as there's, there's no penalty, I mean, there's no offering for adultery and murder in the Old Testament, there was also no offering for blaspheming God's name. There was no offering for pride. And if a child did harm to his parents, there was no offering for that either. There are many crimes or sins in the Old Testament that there was no offering. But we want to look at two particular sins of the whole Bible, and the Bible is full of sins. And we've done them all. Again, not physically, maybe thinking about it later. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And what we're going to do is we're going to close right there. We'll pick up this child. We'll pick up Solomon and the rest of the chapter.